again. It's been a while since our last podcast and Ben keeps reminding us of this. Yeah, but it is actually has been a while, but it's good to be back though, isn't it? Um, you know, this is our uh, third po- podcast it in the is. series, basically a what not to do, but if you do it... We learn from it. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about the needs for goals, plans and budgets. But before we start talking about finance, I think we should chat a little bit about the key foundations of marriage. Yeah, I agree. Firstly, it's uh, essential, really essential, that we have a genuine relationship with God. And secondly, uh, to have good communication together, basically. Two fundamentals that are vitally important. Yeah, absolutely. Having a relationship with God allows us to have the best advocate in the relationship for both of us. Even if your partner's not a Christian, having God in the mix allows God to help in any relationship. Yeah, true. Uh, Look, God doesn't take sides. Um, He allows things to be made very clear in every situation. And he does. But only if we are first praying and including him in on our decisions, uh, decision making really. And secondly, if we are really listening to each other and being directed by him. Yes, listening. I think we really undervalue the importance of listening when it comes to communication. Communication in any relationship is one of the most important components that makes up a healthy and a happy relationship. This is something I have to remind myself of regularly about listening. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, hey, hey, don't take this personally. Um, you're not always a good listener, Mandy. Sorry, what did you say? <laughs> yeah, I get it because, you look, really, you're um, a really busy person. You've got so much happening in your life, so I sort of get it. But I'm that type of guy that craves for your full undivided attention and, uh, and to ensure that you're focusing on what I'm saying. There is no argument in what you're saying, and I do hear you, and I do know that you like my full attention. But the good thing is I love you a whole lot and I understand your needs, so I do try to stop and pay full attention to your very long stories. Yeah, true. I I know that I'm long-winded from time to time. I think it's because um, it comes from my passion and excitement. However, we both understand the importance of, a, of healthy communication and in particular when you start talking about finances. Yeah, and that is so true. So before we start, uh, I think point number one, we all need to have a good relationship with God. And point number two, we need to communicate well, both really key foundations in a relationship. Yeah. Well, with that, it, with that in mind, looking at finances, listeners, Mandy and I uh, have been blessed in our lives. And in particular, we, we both retired when we were both 55. And that meant me retiring in around 2010. Yeah, and, and me in 2014, 2013, 2014. Yeah, uh, yeah around that time. Uh, and I had two years at home. Whilst Mandy worked, that was an experience in itself. For both of us. Yeah. It certainly was. And roles reversed. I do remember you weren't happy if I wasn't home on time and your dinner was on the table getting cold. Yeah. You got me back big time. Gee, did you get me back? Things were good then, but it wasn't always like that, really. No. So let's just start at the beginning. In the late 1970s, just to give us a little uh, viewpoint of what happened uh, back in the good old days. 70s, wow. In the late 1970s, Dan was working for himself as a roofer with a buddy. We were young and carefree and we'd purchased our first home and we had our first child. Dan, what did you like about working for yourself? Oh, wow. Look, I, I can remember that like it was yesterday, really. And looking back, I had no real skills in roofing uh, and I was leaving a really stable job, you know, with a real stable income. You were on the rise, weren't you? Um, Yeah, from tip-top bakeries back in those days. But I was taking a real gamble on making some real money. To have a job where I was my own boss, it sort of had like an air of excitement uh, along with some real scepticism. Anyway, but all of a sudden, I I was up and running, um, and if you remember, with a big paycheck that I'd never seen before. Yeah, it was a great feeling. We had a really good group of friends within our fellowship and most of them were a bit older and more financially stable than us. Yeah, they were. They were. We loved to socialise. Nothing's changed in that area. We loved to go out and we had real fun with friends. 
Pat, we had no savings, but every week we got a great paycheck. <laughs> yeah, it was. In fact, for back then, a huge yeah, paycheck. Yeah, it was a huge one, wasn't it? It was. Life was about being young, social, a new baby, and living life to the fullest. Hey, hey did, we, did we have a budget back then? Absolutely not. <laughs> we knew we needed money for our mortgage, fill up the car with some fuel, eat and buy nice things, and every few weeks or so, we had a tight week when bills came in. Mm. We had been on a really tight budget initially when we first bought our house, so we knew how to do it, but we just didn't see there was a need. Yeah, and look, uh, I remember your parents, who were well off really, they tried to give us, get us to plan a little better for the future. Remember that? Yeah, and they were a bit concerned. Uh, yeah, and, and they could obviously see that uh, we were being really undisciplined in our financial structure, really. Yep, and in fact, recently uh, our adult daughter sent me a photo of a dinner plate to remind me of the impact my mum had on me when she'd politely said, maybe slow down a bit with your living for today. <laughs> At that time, I thought my mum was ridiculous when she gave me some practical advice about budgets but it was within a few months these words came back to bite me. Yeah, you and your mum. <laughs> hey, I, I, I remember that. That was around... 1981. And look, the, the situation was I'd seen a dinner set that I really liked, which was half price. It was $20 and I bought it. We had no money. We were actually in quite a bit of financial debt. And uh, I bought this dinner set and mum had a shot at me straight away about spending the money and I, you know, I was pretty stubborn and I just said, well, you know, it was half price and it was a good buy. It was only uh, 30, uh, no, actually, yeah, 30 years later that I sold that dinner set at a garage sale and it had always been my best dinner set to bring out when uh, we had guests. And I think it was primarily because my mum had made such a fuss yeah. about that dinner yeah, set. That's true, but look, really... A good solid advice for those uh, that are more experienced is really, it can be invaluable, it really. Can. Well, you didn't see it then, though, did you? No. Uh, people may think that things were different back in the good old days, but, you know, really, basically, it's the same rules apply today. And look, if you don't have a plan, then you won't get to where you could be. That's such a good point. In finances, in so many aspects yeah. of marriage. So that's a great point. In early November of that year, the need for people to spend money on home renos just dried up. People were focused on Christmas, holidays and presents. When the work dried up, we had no money to survive, let alone pay bills. Mortgage rates back at that time were about 12.2%. Remember that? Yeah, and that, but they were rising. And they were rising. Yeah. And we went from living the life to incredible debt basically overnight. Yeah, wow, what a time that was. It uh, was. In thinking about that, a great uh, a scripture that comes to mind as we're talking about that is in, uh, in Luke 14 uh, where it says, uh, for which of you intend to build a tower set of not down first and count of the cost whether he have not have sufficient to finish it? That's a great scripture, you know, that to sit down and think about things before you invest. That's yeah. a top scripture. It's got so many applications, not only for budgeting, but just for our complete spiritual yeah, it's a good. it's a good all-rounder. Yeah, look, we, we might be living a Christian life, but it doesn't always mean that we're living a smart Christian life. I remember the night you spoke to me about how much of a debt crisis we were in. Yeah, really. I don't think we you were really interested in finances when I first met you. No, no, I wasn't. I wasn't. And when we got married, I, I had this opinion that you had the reins and all was good. So why should I really get involved? Lazy when I think about it. Yeah, it was a bit. How selfish was I back then? However, today, uh, you're still pretty much hands on with our bills. But the good thing is we now work on the plan together. Yep, that's true. Uh, but back then, I realised each week we were getting more and more in debt. The first thing I did was make an appointment with the bank manager and went and spoke to him about what we could do. Yeah, that, actually, that was a really good decision. That was a top decision back yeah, then. It was, and actually a really important one of uh, when you're managing debt, but also keeping your financial records clean. Don't leave things undone with anyone you have a financial yeah, contract or debt yeah, to. True. I contacted all of our utilities prior to the due date, and I advised we had some financial stresses, and I made an arrangement to commence small regular payments until Danny was able to find work. Yeah, I was seven months pregnant at that time. I also met with the bank 
manager monthly to ensure they understood how important it was that we didn't lose our house. Now, these are really key things yeah. because it actually keeps your financial records yeah, clean. And, yeah, and, and thinking back on that, if I remember rightly, uh, we were about um, six months in the rears, the worst case scenario. Yeah, was that were. true? Yeah. Embarrassing to say that, but we were uh, seriously really didn't have a financial plan or a budget back then at all, no, did we? we had not saved for a rainy day. We were living from pay to pay and we had no real goals. Three big mistakes. Yeah. Well, we certainly learnt the hard way. But but fortunately, God is good. He is. Uh, we certainly had some real eye, eye openers along the way. Hey, just on that, do you remember the day when the, a taxi dropped off a cheque from an anonymous person? Remember oh, that day? Do I what? It was rather embarrassing. When you realise that other people could see that you had messed up big. Mm. Pretty well just had someone knock on the door. I opened the door and there was a taxi driver with a envelope. He had no idea where it had come from. He just said it was to be given to us. Yeah. And it was then, you know, I realised that people understood we were actually in a lot of financial stress and someone had secretly tried to oh, just really lift their life. Yeah, how it was good amazing. Was that? And then on the Tuesday night at the Vogue, remember a brother in the fellowship came to me and said oh, yeah. he'd heard that you were unemployed and that we were struggling and that there was a job at his work. He told me it wasn't much pay, but it was better than being unemployed. And he drove me home to discuss this with you. Did too. I remember telling him. Uh, do you remember? I couldn't work for such a small amount of money. I do. And what was his response? Yeah, look, I will never forget that response. He, he said, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. You know, I, I didn't even know what that meant at the time. But he went on to say, he, he pointed out a scripture in Second Thessalonians in chapter 3, uh, where it says, if any man would not work, neither should he eat. You know, he told me this while I was laying in my bed. Uh, we're talking about a slap of reality. Uh, yeah, and as much as we needed to be taken off our high horse, the biggest shock came when you took that job and we realised we were actually earning pittance compared to being self-employed. But the difference was we were guaranteed that pittance yeah. every single week. Did, yeah. That was when we realised that every dollar we earned had a job or a goal. Mm. We needed to stop living from paycheck to paycheck. We needed to catch up on our debt. And we needed to start saving for a rainy day. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, looking back on that, what did we do to change our bad habits? Uh, look, I know that it started with you returning uh, to work as soon yep. as our daughter Amy was born. Now, that was hard. Certainly uh, was. It was. It was for only both a, of us, actually. Yeah, I agree. It was only for a few hours in the evenings after I got home, but there was a lot of, and there was a lot of pressure on both of us at the same time, as you said. Yes, there was. I got a job doing Stockville at Coles. You used to pull in at 5.45 in the evening and I was off five minutes later. I was still breastfeeding at the time, so that meant you had a newborn and a two-year-old. I'd prepared tea for you, but you were responsible for getting Shannon to bed, dealing with a newborn who didn't take a bottle and getting yourself organised for the next day at work. Yeah, well, actually, that, that was a really busy six months, wasn't it? Certainly was. But in that time, we were able to start catching up on our debts and you learnt how to manage a hungry baby and a toddler all on your own. Yeah, uh, I got, on, got on top of that. The other thing we did, we started to pray about our future. Good choice. Yeah, we wanted to learn from our mistakes and, and also put some things in place uh, so we could move forward as responsible parents and uh, with a financial plan in place, really. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, that is a really big thing. When you have kids, you've got that extra bonus or that extra responsibility of it's not just us two having fun. We've got some real financial commitments. Yeah. One thing that we did do, we decided to sell our first home at this time. Well, maybe me more than you. Yeah, look, the, but we both remember, I, I really loved our first home yeah. and, and I didn't really want to sell it. No, um, you didn't. But really, I could see that you had uh, your heart set on a place off the main road we were living on where our kids could go to a particular school. You know, in the end, uh, I let go and, and put in this to the, uh, to the Lord together. Remember yep. that? The Lord showed us uh, this was the right direction and we asked the Lord to make it abundantly clear. And yes, we did. And yes, he did. We sold our house prior to it even being advertised. The realtor was putting the sign out on the front lawn and a lady stopped and asked if she could have a look. She was from the other side of town and, and she wanted to look there and then. I came home from shopping to find a note on our kitchen table, your house is sold. 
Yeah, look, it was the best feeling when you pray about things and it becomes abundantly clear that God's got your back. You know, we both know, Mandy, uh, we sold our first home for over double than what we paid for it three years prior. We felt like it was coming together, didn't we? We certainly did. And we'd learnt our lesson. We were able to pay off all our debts and buy a block of land right near the school of our choice. We both knew this time we were going to be smarter. Yeah, look, and, and this time, this time we had a budget, we had a plan, and we knew that we were going to build a home without all the bells and whistles and you know, the extravagance so we could balance our funds across a regular manageable mortgage payments and bills whilst we were able to save a little and live a little. I think a managed income creates a better outcome. Actually, you've got some very clever little things that you're coming up with here. We had learnt the hard way, but the good thing we had learnt. So from then on, we were much more responsible with our money. Yeah, but we still had fun. We did and still do. Yep, and we were able to understand that the best budget is one where you can allocate money prior to spending it. That is true. But today it must be a nightmare for young marrieds to manage. There is so much accessible plastic money around. Yeah, I know it's easy to access your money um, or the bank's money, really, when you think about it, through credit card and debit card spending. You know, it can be a real issue. Um, You know, really, it can be a massive trap, really. Yeah, and now with take-home, lay-by, zip pay, after pay and hundreds of other buy now, pay later options, it makes it really inviting to just have it today. I don't know how many times I've heard someone say, it was so easy to put it on after pay, but now each month I have so much have to pay for these items mm. that I don't even enjoy them as I feel quite stressed. Yeah, well, well maybe the the, uh, the good old lay-by system wasn't bad after all. Ah, uh, yes, I, I remember those days. So what would we tell our younger selves today which would have given us a better start? Uh, okay, well, well firstly... Um, to get our priorities right. You know, look, look, as a Christian, our first desire should be to serve God. Yeah. First of all, number one, um, before we even look at wealth of, that we want to accumulate for the future, we need to invest in our spiritual treasure chest. But with the right attitude and desires uh, of our heart, we'll be blessed. Now, years back, I do recall a sister in our fellowship, Val Clee, giving a testimony where she talked about how they almost lost everything. I remember she said, they can take everything, but they can never take our salvation. Dean and Val were tithing and said they couldn't afford not to tithe as they were blessed abundantly after that. Look, there's a scripture in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. It says, every man according to as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. You know, the tip of the day, here's the tip of the day, Mandy, tithing is a smart investment. You know, we when we give to God, God gives back abundantly. You know, I cannot stress how much an investment is. When you you can't outgive God, but when you tithe, God has your back and looks after you financially. Yeah, that's actually a really good point there. And attitude has got so much to do with success stories. And Luke 12, verse 34, it says, where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. We learnt this the hard way by wanting the best of things that are temporal. We also had to learn to be able to say no or to offer a different solution when we were younger. We were hanging with a group who were a little older than us and who were also financially stable. Yeah, hey, that was a good little scripture there, Mandy, but really we just often got caught up in the moment, didn't we? We did, and I remember your eyebrows raised when I wanted to buy a new dress for that special occasion. Yeah, or going out to dinner with friends when we really didn't have the money for that week. And, you know, the thing is, I I know we all find it hard at times to say no or not at the moment to friends. It can feel rather embarrassing to say, hey, we're a bit short of funds at the moment. But you know what? Most people respect you when you're honest. So definitely have a budget. Set it up early in the piece so you don't make the mistakes we made. Yeah, so look, look if you're listening to this and you have not have not got a budget or you haven't had a budget for years and, and you're in a bad cycle with money, change can still occur. The first step is to actually want to change. You, yeah, that's a good you have, point. You need to want to change. And, and, and once you've decided that you want to change, it's time to start developing a genuine plan. And, and then once you've got, you have a plan, you uh, need to put that plan into action. 
make some actual changes in how to use your money. Yes, making significant change in anything, even finances, won't happen overnight. Once you've considered the change, put some things into a plan and put it into action, you have to continue on. This will often mean going back and reviewing your plan, adjusting your goals and starting again until you get it right. Yeah, absolutely. Change in anything takes time and there has to be an acceptance of making that change. That's a good point, Dan. If you start off big and then it's not working, better to stop, review what's not working, make some minor adjustments and start again. It will come. Yeah, that's actually so true. And here are four things that we can all benefit from. Number one, ensure that God and prayer form an important part of decision-making around finances. And if married, make decisions about finances together. Absolutely, yep. Number two, and I think this is a really important one, put aside money for camps and assembly activities like convention or bigger ticket items as a priority so getting to them is made easier. Mm -hmm. In the United K, I don't know if you remember, Danny, what they had. They had a great idea. Um, This was around camps and events where each year the assembly knew exactly what the camps were and the costs. Hey, they were big on that. They were very big on it. And then each uh, family would depend on how many people were going to the camp and the events for the entire year. They'd work out what would be their uh, fortnightly direct debit. It would go into like a holding account. And whenever a camp or that came up, the money just got taken out of that holding account. So they never had to sort of like find, you know, $200 all of a sudden to get to a camp. And they they pretty well had 100% turn up at all their camps. So maybe that's something we should try to get set up in Adelaide. Well, I can never know. You can put that there. It's a good idea. Yeah. Number three is have a plan. So stop living from pay to pay. And to do this, you need to develop some short-term and long-term financial goals. From those goals, you need to develop a budget that includes everything you need to reach your goals. You need to give every dollar a job. Whoa, I like that. Yeah. Okay, well, what, was, what was that again? Well, give every dollar a job. Gee, that means everything's accountable, would not it? It does. It wow. means if you don't plan for it, you'll just fritter it away. And review your budget on a regular basis, whether that's monthly, quarterly, half yearly, and adjust where necessary. And finally, don't let a pay increase be lost in the ether. This is the one thing we did really well. Yeah. Every pay increase we received from around 30 years of age until we retired we put as much of it yeah. as we could afford into yeah, our super. Yeah, we certainly did. That's true, yep. Statistics say that around 50% of people live from one pay to the next, regardless of how much they earn. Wow. Earn more, bigger spend if you don't have a plan. Wow. And Danny, what would be your suggestions? Okay. Um, look, off the top, I could, I, I've probably got three uh, on my list. Um, first of all, budgeting together is vitally important. Yeah, that's... I can't emphasise how essential that is, really. Yeah, I agree with that. My second one, don't put strain on your partner when it comes to finances. For example, you know, we need another car, we need another holiday, you know, and all that extravagant things, especially if you haven't budgeted for it, or to do the opposite and become really oppressive about your finances so that life becomes incredibly unbearable. You know, there's no room for stooges in all of this. Finances are like building a house. You must have a foundation first so you can enjoy the rewards after. You know, people won't see, might not be able to see your financial foundation, but it will be reflected in you both. You know, That's when you, so true, Dan. When you build a house, you, you don't see the foundation, do you? No. A lot of work went into that foundation, and it's there to hold the whole show up. You know, without the foundation, it all falls apart. So the budgeting early and getting all the structure right, then the rewards come after. And lastly, if I can have this one, you need to talk together, have a financial date. I love the date. Yeah, I love the date. And make informed decisions and always uh, in line with your goals and budget. In a previous episode we recorded, uh, it was I Wish I Had That. We talked about the importance of a regular formal dates that were, and, and the purpose was to communicate specifically about key things in your marriage that need to be put on the the table to be discussed. Communication is one of the real keys to success. I I can't stress that enough. I agree. Listening and valuing each other's point of view. And I think that's what you're saying is so important, like not just listening but valuing. We may not always have the same opinion. It doesn't mean that 
either one of us is wrong. It just means that we may be looking at it from a different angle. And it never hurts mm. to get another opinion or input into yeah, your budget true. from either a financial advisor or another person you trust that may be able to assist you in heading in the right direction. Mm. So if you're unsure how to start or your finances are complex, definitely seek help to get you going. Yeah, look, the hardest thing about that is knowing how to go about it. You know, recently I saw a big cre increase in our car insurance. I remember that. Yeah, and I thought, oh, I could help here. And I love that. Yeah, and, and I'm going to call and get some alternative quotes. And um, I did this and I was going to save around, uh, from memory, about $120 a year. We were winning. Yep, and I, I thought we were winning yeah. too. But it was so confusing as each insurer had a slightly different way of quote coding and before it was near on impossible to work out what was the best option look in the end both you and I we we realized that that policy had the the policy we had rather was the best yes. uh, for our needs you know look it, it was slightly dearer but it has so much more already built into it you know these but these things take time and they're so annoying because like you know I think if you asked anyone about changing over your internet or your telephone or your health, all of those things are exactly the same. You experience this, it's not very clear. Yeah, but look, in the end, what was really good about it was that we'd made an informed decision together rather than just let it go by. Yeah, and I remember that day, and that's a real problem. You have to know what questions to ask. Things like, is it cheaper if we pay up front? What is the best price you can do without compromising are a few good questions. And another really good way to help with your budget, particularly if you are on your own or you have limited funds, is to have a set amount paid in to your utilities via automated BPAY each fortnight. Align that to your pay. So for an example, if your electricity normally costs you around $360 a quarter, yeah. have an auto debit from your account uh, each fortnight for $60 yeah, straight paid off your electricity account. When you get your bill, yeah. you'll be in credit. And not only that, you'll, uh, you won't have to find that lump sum all at once. Yeah, actually, they're really good tips, Mandy. They are really good. And look, another mistake is getting multiple loans or credit cards because of promotions that seem so good to be true. Oh, absolutely. We always had that one right. When we were younger, we would only ever have one interest-free purchase at a time. If you don't, you end up with increasing debt. You can be lured into rolling all your debts into one um, low interest rate or even zero interest rate. And then if that's not managed over the low interest rate period, you can end up in even more debt. It's a great way to get things right, but you must be disciplined. Another trap can be leaving your budgeted money for bills, etc., in your saving account that's connected to your FPOS yeah. card. How true is that? That's just really false economy, isn't it? You it know, is. Just because you have savings doesn't mean you have more cash. You have to remind yourself that this is just what it is. It's savings. Yes, for a rainy day. For a rainy bills. day, yeah. Yeah, so put aside for the future when bills come in. Stop living from day to day and don't spend more on your credit card than you can afford to pay off in full in one month. Lastly, before we go, we can't go without hearing Danny's story of the hidden talents. Well, hidden in Nangwari at yeah. least. L listeners, um, uh, I just want to let you know, first of all, I, when I was young, I lived in the, a place called Nangwari in the southeast of South Australia. And as a young kid, a very young kid, I didn't trust people with, with uh, my money. Not that I had much, but I was actually starting to accumulate money by my, doing little jobs and, and getting money from different places. But because I didn't trust anybody, I put it into a big glass preserving jar now, where I lived, there was a fire break. And what that is, is a block of land between suburban living, my back fence, and the pine forest. So it was a great big block of land. And I dug my preserving jar down around about two feet into the ground and uh, so that no one could see it. And I had a pirate's map. That's what I did when I was a young kid. And, um, and I made sure that nobody ever saw me putting my money in there. And over the times throughout a pound, shillings and pence and decimal currency, I accumulated a lot of money in that jar, and uh, but it was inside the ground and nobody could get to it. Anyway, in, in the end, I came home one day. I'll never forget this. I had done a deal for $37.37. .37. Anyway, I unraveled my probably my 20th pirate map to check out my markers. I'd worn the others out. And I, as I unraveled my pirate's map, I looked out and the Woods and Forest Department had come along and they had ploughed the entire fire break up. 
And uh, I just could not believe what I was seeing before my very I eyes. I bet your heart felt broken. Oh, yeah. And look, the good part was at the time, as I thought was, I knew that the the plower disc on a the, the disc on the plower rather were eighteen inch discs, and I knew that my my treasure was down two feet, so I knew I was going to be okay. But you know, listeners, no matter how many holes I dug, I never found that treasure. And you know, to this day, that money is still there. Where it is, I'm not too sure. But it reminds me of a a parable that Jesus gave in Matthew twenty five when he gave uh, three servants. He gave them talents to invest, and two of them did well. They, they doubled their, their, um, their investment, but the third one, he put it in the ground, just like I did with my money, and uh, well, that didn't go well for him. And really, my money is still in the ground, and it benefits nobody at all. So investments are worthwhile taking hold of, basically. So what did we learn from that story, Dad? There's one more very important thing to always remember when you're talking about wealth, finances and budgets, even my jar on the ground. And what is that? Yeah. Make your first priority to lay up treasure in heaven. Now, that's in in Matthew chapter 6, if you're looking for that. So sometimes people can have the opposite problem. They are so caught up on saving that life can be a chore. One may be critical of the smallest spending of another person. Which can be really debilitating in a relationship, actually. it It can cause real problems inside of a marriage. As we have said before, and we'll keep on saying, talk about things together. Make decisions together. These things are so important. And don't forget date nights. Yep. And we don't have to have split bills now. We pay us all all our own money now. We do. Yep. And being prepared to listen to each other. And I agree with that, Dan. And as you keep on telling me, I have whizzies in my head and I do have to say to myself, listen to what the other person is saying rather than thinking about my response. This is often how disagreements can start. Yeah, that is so true. Look, being joined together requires working together. It certainly does. And to be honest, being perfect is way too hard to live up to. And most of our good stories of life are when we did things wrong and we learned from it. We really hope these little pearlers can help others maybe not make the mistakes that we made. Yeah. Hey, man, you look like I've really enjoyed this, Mandy. It's caused me to reflect on how far we've come even to this very day. And in conclusion, we've learned that what really helps is having God in the middle of not only our budgeting plans, but all of our plans. I agree with that. I think it's probably a good place to finish, Dan. So until next time. He says. And she says. And God God says. says. I do that too, Ben. Do you do a Muttley? Yeah, I do a Muttley. Where do I go now? No, no, you're not a Muttley. No, no, you don't do Muttley. I don't know how I do that. No, you're a real Muttley. I can even picture Muttley clear in my mind when you're laughing. (laughs) (laughs) When we had mortgages, you only paid your mortgages every three months. Really? Yeah, yeah, it was quarterly. You pay your mortgages quarterly. And, and, And they didn't even know that you could pay regularly. But you just got to bill like a council bill every quarter. I said to Danny on the way here, I said, I completely forgot about that. I said, you imagine people these days getting their mortgage once every three months and you'd have to save the money in the bank ready for your mortgage. And then they changed it. So it went to monthly and now you can pay it whenever you like. I practice our vocals. La, 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 la. No, I better not do that because he might regret it.